Uh, Chris Chinock here at CES 2014. I'm in the Technicolor uh, suite here over at the Venetian, where I just had a very good uh, demonstration of a number of it, uh, fantastic technologies. Uh, some of it was for uh, upscaling, but I want to focus in this video uh, on their high dynamic range demo. Uh, what you're looking at right now through the camera is on the left, a kind of a standard, uh, these are both uh, 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 full HD displays, not 4K displays. On the left is a standard TV, and on the right is their uh, modified uh, high dynamic range TV. Uh, so there's a whole ecosystem of, uh, of technologies that's going to have to be developed to be able to, to capture, to distribute, and display uh, high dynamic range uh, content. And Technicolor's put together um, all those technologies to, uh, to bring to the industry and hopefully get adopted. Uh, so on the content capture side, uh, you need to start obviously with a camera that ha that can capture a wide color gamut uh, and also has the ability to capture wide dynamic range. Um, so for example, um, th the, uh, the F55 camera from Sony uh, can capture wide color. Uh, it also has a fairly good dynamic range. Uh, it's spec'd at 14 f-stops, but uh, in reality it's probably closer to 12 f-stops. Uh, which is actually not wide enough for good wide dynamic range content. Uh, so what Technicolor did is they modified a 3D rig from uh, Binocul. Um, and instead of having two identical, um, well, they actually have two identical cameras, two F55s in the, in the beam splitter rig, but they put a neutral density filter in front of one of the cameras. So when they're shooting a scene, they basically get an overexposed shot and an underexposed shot. Um, and then um, to, to capture essentially 20 f-stops of, uh, of dynamic range. Um, so these two uh, uh, identical images are then uh, uh, first geometry corrected as you would do in a normal 3D image, uh, but then those images are fused into a single file which merges the, um, the, the whitest whites and the darkest darks basically to create a uh, high dynamic range uh, image. Which is um, which is about 16 bits, and it's a floating point uh, designation. Uh, so that process is what th they use to create basically a high dynamic range uh, video file, uh, which is not a, not a standard at this point. Something they're going to have to work on to uh, to be create a standard for that. Um, the next part of the process then is to be able to distribute this content uh, out from uh, from the uh, through post production and out to the home and the consumer. Um, so uh, there's Dolby has a competitive system. I'll talk about that in, an, in another video. Uh, but in the Technicolor approach, um, they basically take this uh, the 16-bit floating point um, signal input and break it into two components: a, a low, uh, let's call it a low resolution, a low um, content signal um, that basically has kind of uh, mostly uh, luminance information, almost the backlight information, if you will. Um, and that, that, that has, um, it can be very lightly encoded or even unencoded. It's just not a lot of, uh, of data. And then the second part of this has um, either 8 or 10-bit uh, video information that can go through a standard AVC uh, or HEVC encoder. Uh, and both of those signals are then merged uh, along with metadata to go out into a standard distribution path um, again, no standard for exactly what that, that, that uh, data wrapper would look like, uh, but they'll have to work on standards to, to figure that one out. Uh, but essentially, it's using uh, off-the-shelf components, so it's a, a hopefully a, a matter of, of, of wrapping that together. Um, so that gets uh, then uh, basically to the TV or the set-top box, um, where it all has to be uh, decoded, so the, the inverse of that to recreate this 16-bit uh, uh, floating point uh, high dynamic range. Uh, image. The third step is then what's called inverse tone mapping, uh, and that is now be how they're going to map that uh, high dynamic range uh, image onto uh, basically the backlight, uh, an 8-bit backlight and an 8 or 10-bit panel. Um, so they they have a, a, a demo here. They show kind of a, uh, a, a more standard gamma ex expansion. In fact, this is a demo that's showing right now. Uh, oh no, this is not the demo that's showing. Um, where they on the, the so they have a, a, a gamma expansion on the left, and they have their own algorithm to uh, to do that. There's the inverse tone mapping on the right, uh, and that uh, that needs to be done because um, the perception of color is different at different luminance levels. So you have to make some adjustments for for doing that 
at different luminance levels to add more saturation when it's, when it's higher luminance, for example. So they have an whole, a whole algorithm for remapping uh, that data to be able to drive the, the backlight and the panel. So, um, uh, and then the TV, of course, has to be have um, uh, uh, dynamic uh, scanning, uh, dynamic backlight zones. This particular one has about 2,000 uh, and LEDs to be able to drive very high brightness into each of those zones. Um, this one has brightness of up to about uh, 4,000 nits in the highest uh, bright points. So uh, this is the example of the uh, ex expansion I was telling about in the third stage here, Technicolor expansion and a simple uh, gamma expansion. Uh, so that's most of the uh, system. Um, now, uh, I will tell you, uh, uh, you may see this in the video here, but um, the uh, especially in some of the outdoor scenes and the dark scenes, the incredible um, dynamic range is just so apparent. Uh, if you look at the standard TV, it's, it looks good, and you wouldn't say it was bad, but when you look at the dy uh, dynamic expanded dynamic range one, uh, it's just so obviously better uh, and brighter. It's just, uh, it's incredible. I mean, you can see in this video here on the right uh, how the white the whites are and the d dynamic range is just uh, very compelling. Uh, there's some outdoor market scenes that, you, uh, that went by earlier where the whites of the laundry are just incredible. Uh, oh, and the other part I didn't mention is on the distribution side, um, they've demonstrated that uh, you can actually distribute this HD signal uh, using HEVC, I think it was HEVC encoding, uh, at five megabits per second, and we had some uh, perceptual side-by-side uh, -side images uh, to look at the, the differences, and they're very minor. So um, many of the pieces seem to be in place here for a very compelling and dynamic uh, solution. So um, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the high dynamic range in the Technicolor booth. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll here's that last video of the outdoor scene. This is amazing. So Chris Chinock for Display Central.